Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, aka G133. I'm back here with another episode of the Legit Shoot Podcast. Here with your Monday Night Raw review and results for March 8th, March 8th, 2021. I'm recording this the next day on the 9th. Uh, and I'm kind of glad I didn't do a live, uh, live stream. Well, you guys know I can't live stream at the moment. I won't be able to live stream again, most likely till sometime in April. So you guys are going to have to continue, uh, doing with these unfortunate pre-recorded podcasts the next day. But, uh, we're going to talk about Raw tonight. And the reason why I'm happy is I would have tore this show to shreds. This does not feel like WrestleMania season at all. Like... It, it, it's it's bad. This is one of the worst WrestleMania builds I've seen in a long time. We are about, what, five weeks away from the show? Maybe less than that at this point, right? Actually, you could obviously say maybe about four weeks, right? Because, what, today's the ninth. WrestleMania is on the 10th and 11th. Yeah, we're about a month away. And we've only had, what, what like about two matches announced? And those two matches aren't even official. Even though Sasha and Bianca is official, right? Uh, the Universal Championship match with Roman and Edge could be changed, even though I believe it should be changed, right? It could be changed because Daniel Bryan could find his way into that match somehow. And I'm just like, what are we doing? What are we doing? We have no direction, right? We do, Even though we assume that Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley's going to be the WWE Championship match, it's nothing's been made official. And we don't even know how the number one contender is going to be made. You have Drew McIntyre over here talking about, uh, oh, I'm the presumed, right? I'm the assumed, you know, number one contender for the WWE Championship, even though he did nothing for it. It's just because he lost the WWE Championship because of the money the bank cash in. That's it. Right? You don't have a ranking system. You don't do any tournaments. You have nothing. You know, everybody's coming out talking about who wants to face Oscar for the Raw Women's Championship. And we'll talk about Payne Royce's promo. Because Payne Royce cut a, uh, a really good promo that a lot of people are talking about from Raw Talk uh, the other night. And there's some other things going on as well. You know, you have no direction for the Raw Women's Championship. You have so many superstars who right now we don't know what they're going to do at WrestleMania. Like, what the hell is an AJ Styles going to do at WrestleMania? Who's going to go up against Matt Riddle? Is Keith Lee even going to be on the show? And I'm just talking about the, some of this from the Raw perspective, right? You know, the Raw Tag Team Championships. We're going to get the New Day versus the Hurt Business again. They have a Raw Tag Team Championship match that was announced for next week. And we've seen, as, as good as these two teams are together, it just shows how bad the tag team division is. You know, we've seen this match how many times since the draft back in October? This is maybe the 10th or 15th time we've seen this match. And I'm actually being serious. You know, and I'm not going to be surprised. You're probably going to see that match again at WrestleMania just because they have nobody else in that tag team division and they refuse to merge the divisions like I've been saying for the last three years. Then you have Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon, a storyline that's centered around Shane McMahon thinking that Braun Strowman is stupid. That is really the storyline that they're trying to tell. Shane McMahon thinks that Braun Strowman is stupid and every week he tries to find other various ways and methods to showcase this. And it, it, it's embarrassing because this is not something, this is not something, you know, that should be on a WrestleMania card. If this was like a B-level pay-per-view, whatever, I don't care. But this is a storyline that they're trying to make you invest in to watch this match culminate at WrestleMania. First of all, I don't care about the match, period, because who cares about Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon? Who would be interested to see that match? The match makes no sense. You have a power guy like Strowman against Shane McMahon, who's a gimmick guy who just jumps off everything in sight. That, there's no way, you, if you're expecting Shane McMahon to, be, you, you, to give you a performance like he did against The Undertaker or against AJ Styles a couple years ago, you're not going to get that here. Braun Strowman is not The Undertaker. He's not AJ Styles. You look back at Braun Strowman's career, how many great matches has he actually given you? Outside of the couple he, he had with Roman Reigns back in the day, right? And maybe I think the one he had with Seth Rollins when they faced off for the Universal Championship a couple years ago, that's all I could think about. 
Uh, you know, so why why are we getting this? Why are you wasting the road to WrestleMania with this bullshit? It is sad. I read a report the other day that Vince McMahon has decided to completely tear up the original plans for WrestleMania. All right, and now he's gonna he wants to make the show as big as possible. And also, you know what's worse? Now they're going with this new tagline because WrestleMania tickets are actually going to be on sale uh, next week. After WrestleMania, they're going to be staying in the Thunderdome, of course, somewhere in the Tip area. They just won't be in Tropicana Field. They'll be in some other building. But uh, like I was saying, you know, they're ripping up the plans for the WrestleMania uh, and, you know, since, you know, WrestleMania tickets are going on sale next week, they're going with this outrageous tagline, WrestleMania back to in business. Right now, it looks like they're going to be able to have close to 30,000 people, which is really good, right? You'll be able to social distance people. You can use the cardboard cutouts like you guys did at the Super Bowl. You can give us, you know, a pretty decent uh, presentation. But the point is, that I'm trying to make is, now you have Tom Phillips' dumbass Every five seconds reminding us that WrestleMania is back in business. Like, no, it's not. This is not back in business. This is not WrestleMania season. I don't know what this is. They're just lollygagging. I have to say it every week. This is what you get when you don't have concrete plans put in place months beforehand. You should always have the end, the finale, the end game in sight. At the beginning of a storyline. You should already had it. They should have already had the matches that they wanted to do for WrestleMania plan months in advance. And all they had to do was figure out week by week how we want to get there. That's it. But they didn't have any plans. Because all they do is week by week booking now. 50-50 booking. They have no idea who they want to push. They have no idea what storylines they want to tell. What matches they want to do. And here we are, a month away from WrestleMania, and we have, honestly, we have no idea what the card's going to look like. I don't care how good Roman versus Edge or Roman versus Daniel Bryan and Edge, whatever it ends up being. I don't care how good that's going to be. I don't care how good Sasha Bianca is going to be. That's only two matches out of the entire card. Rainier versus The Fiend, I'm sorry, I just don't care about the story anymore. I don't. I love Alexa Bliss, but they've done the same thing thing they've done the same thing now for how many weeks with Alexa Bliss making Randy Orton gag that whatever that black substance is right how many weeks have they done that how many weeks have they done it where Alexa Bliss is in some alley right or in some room or in some part of the fun house right playing with this new logo the like the, the they, I understand they took out the feed at TLC, but they, they have dragged this on now for nearly four months. Four months. It, it's not at that appealing anymore. It doesn't matter how good Alexa Bliss is. It's just I'm tired of it. You can't do the same thing every week and just expect us to sit there and just take it. This show was garbage last night. It was an atrocious. At least SmackDown is semi-decent. But Raw is garbage. And this is it, it, it's symbolic because it represents what this WrestleMania build has been. And what WrestleMania season this year has been. Because it, to remember, at the end of the day, as long as Vince is getting paid by those massive TV deals. And now the new Peacock deal that the WWE Network is transitioning into now in the next couple weeks. They don't care. They don't care. They don't feel like they have to change. Because they're still going to make money regardless of putting on good or bad television. And we don't deserve that. Especially for a pandemic year. Right? For this being your first show with fans in over a year. Because I was at the last WDB show before the pandemic. It was the SmackDown in Boston when John Cena returned. And they announced him versus The Fiend and Roman versus Goldberg. That was the last show I was at. That was the last live show that we had with fans. For over a year, for everything that everybody has gone through with this pandemic, the fact that this is the bullshit that we are getting going to WrestleMania season, especially with WrestleMania, a show that you're going to have fans, right? You should be giving us the best show possible with the best storylines you can think of, the best championship matches. But instead, right now, I don't care if it's two nights. This show is looking completely garbage. I have no idea what to expect from this year's WrestleMania. And that is disappointing. So, 
I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get into Monday Night Raw tonight. First off, thank you guys so very much for joining me on the podcast. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new. Also, man, thank you guys for everything. You guys have been awesome. Check out the SmackDown review if you guys haven't already. All right. So uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So Bobby Lashley, now remember, that was the big thing from... Uh, that was the big thing from last week's show. Bobby Lashley becoming the new WWE champion by absolutely crushing The Miz, right? I'm not going to go talking about The Miz. I've talked about it the last couple weeks. There's no need to talk about it anymore. It was a waste of time, all right? And I'm not trying to disrespect The Miz, but in 2021, him as the WWE champion made no sense, right? And... I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved what they did here with Bobby Lashley. This is the best this guy has looked in such a long time. So the show started off, they showed a promo talking about uh, what happened, recapping last week's show. Then after that, Bobby Lashley came with the Hurt Business, right? And then uh, the Hurt Business gave Bobby Lashley the... Uh, the floor to actually talk. It wasn't MVP talking. It was Bobby Lashley talking. He was wearing a nice gray suit that matched with the belt, looking like an absolute beast. So then Bobby talked about, you know, every the journey it took for him to get to this moment, right? The 16 years while he had to sat backstage and watch everybody else get opportunity after opportunity. Why? Right? While he didn't get those opportunity because of backstage politics and utter nonsense, right? And how now there was nobody, not the Miz, not McIntyre, there was nobody that was stopping him from getting to the top. Right, and now that he is WWE champion, he walk he plans to walk in and walk out to walk in and walk out of WrestleMania the Almighty WWE champion. I love that tagline, the Almighty WWE champion. That's the way he was actually announced tonight when he made his entrance. So I'm gonna say the same thing I said last week. I love Drew McIntyre, but this is Bobby Lashley's time. We're not giving Bobby Lashley the WWE Championship to hold that title for a couple weeks and that to be that, right? No, you've, you've built up Bobby Lashley very, very well. He's been one of, if not the best booked male superstar in the last year, outside of Roman Reigns and maybe Drew McIntyre, all right? He has been built absolutely dominantly like a beast, and he deserves a title reign, he doesn't deserve to only hold that title for about a month and a half, and that's it. He should be holding that title all the way to SummerSlam, if you ask me, at least. All right? And then you can have him, you know, lose the title to Brock, if Brock's back by that time, or if you want to give back to McIntyre, right? There are some matches you could do. You could do McIntyre versus Lashley again. You could do Lashley versus Lesnar, the dream match we've all wanted. Or you can do Lashley versus Lesnar versus McIntyre. All right, I don't expect Lesnar to be back for WrestleMania, but if you want to save that for SummerSlam, I'm not complaining. But I will say it, and I'll keep saying it every single week. Bobby Lashley needs to hold that WWE Championship for a good amount of time. I love Bobby Lashley. I love the way he's been booked, and he deserves a long WWE Championship reign. Period. Period. All right? And... So then after Lashley cut a, you know, really good promo, right? I like that this came from him at, instead of MVP. Uh, Miz came out as they were going to do the WWE Championship rematch. I had no problem with them starting the show with this because, let's be honest, who the hell wanted to see that crap in the main event? Come on, right? Like, we, there, was, there was nothing that they were going to do to make you believe that the Miz had any chance against Bobby Lashley. This was more about the showcasing how dominant Lashley truly is. So, what we got is uh, basically the Miz comes out. He just starts complaining, right? It, just, it was a good promo. I'm not going to say and lie. It just, you know, just didn't care. So, the Miz was talking about how things went down uh, last week. Uh... Uh, sulking, how he was forced to defend his WWE Championship when he wasn't fully healthy, right? And he talked about how how he had been in the company for so many years, rarely had any injuries, did all the media appearances. So when he says he can't go, he can't go. But instead, he was forced to defend his WWE Championship, and now he no longer is champion, right? Uh, he said that he... Uh, 
He said that he fairly defended his title, exploded the championship advantage, and then was screwed because of it. All right. But he said that he had a chance for redemption tonight. Sorry, Miz. Nobody was going to believe that you had any chance against Lastly. So, uh, Lastly enters the uh, the arena. All right. He had a new entrance. He had like these uh, these thunder or these lightning uh, graphics, bunch of pyro, right? And then he had an all new Almighty Titantron, which looked pretty cool. And then he had his normal music come out. And he, the, the, I'm not gonna lie, the championship looks so good around his waist, man. Like is it, it matches him perfectly. Uh, it, it looks like it was almost meant for him, really. So I gotta give Lastly credit, man. He's been deserving of this moment, and the title looks perfect on him. So we got the match right. And like I said, there was no way last year was losing the title here. It was at the beginning of the show. So it told you that they wanted to get it out of the way early, right? So, uh, lastly dominated this match. Absolutely dominated. Miz barely got any offense in. You know, the, the match only went on for as long as it did because they had Lassie just drag out the time. It was just to fill in some time on the show. Lassie could have put Miz in with into the hurt lock at the beginning and that would have been it but it wasn't so uh Miz tapped out right away when he did eventually did get put into the hurt lock and that was it right and that was the last we would see of lastly we wouldn't see him for the rest of the show but then McTire was watching backstage and McTire was very angry because he said that as much as he respects Lastly, you know, how big a beast he is, how hard he's worked to get to this moment, he took the coward's approach, right? He had to go through the Miz, having the Miz, you know, cash in on him after Lastly attacked McIntyre at the Elimination Chamber to allow the Miz to become WWE Champion and then becoming WWE Champion by beating the Miz, right? So basically McIntyre says, why didn't you just come after me man to man? I would have gave you the title match, right, if you had just asked. You know, but instead, you took the coward's approach by going and allowing somebody lesser than me become WWE champion and then just feasting on the easy guy. So, I, I you can understand Mac, what McIntyre was trying to say, all right? But clearly, they're trying to save the McIntyre and Lashley match for Mania. But before McIntyre could uh, make his point, right, man, then McIntyre was talking about how he's the presumed WWE uh, number one contender, which is sad because it should be definite. The fact that we're not having some kind of tournament or some kind of, I don't know, number one contenders match to figure out who's going to be the next, you know, number one contender, even though it makes sense that it would be McIntyre or Sheamus, right? Especially since Keith Lee, I, it looks like we'll say Keith Lee, you know, talk about Keith Lee for another day because his career may be over before it even begins on the main roster, man. I don't know what's going on with Keith Lee right now, but, uh, you know, Sheamus would then attack McIntyre backstage, and then uh, uh, Sheamus would keep saying, I'm never done with you, man. I'm never done with you. This ain't never going to end until I say so. And, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the attack was really good, but you can tell that Sheamus and McIntyre trust each other, right? They trust each other to absolutely just go at it, destroy each other, you know, hit each other as hard as they can. Like, every single time they face each other, you can see the marks and the welts on each other's backs. Like, they, they don't hold anything back. And you got to love that because you don't see that enough. You see a lot of superstars that are scared to touch one another, scared to, you know, get all, you know, uh, uh, to get all physical with their opponents. Like, we need more people like McIntyre and Sheamus, man. I absolutely love it. So... Uh, McIntyre, the thing about it is, McIntyre didn't go up just trying to find Sheamus. He actually got up and he got mad that he allowed himself to get attacked by Sheamus again, which I liked. And then, so McIntyre went over to Adam Pearce, right, and he said, I demand a no DQ match with Sheamus right here, right now, all right? So, we got the match. McIntyre attacked Sheamus before, uh, before the bell started ringing. And, you know, it made sense because I would actually got pissed if McIntyre didn't attack Sheamus before the match. Because Sheamus did it to him backstage just a little bit beforehand. So, like, like you know, McIntyre, don't be a pussy. You know what I mean? But uh, remember, McIntyre and Sheamus had an amazing match the week before. And I thought that was going to end this feud. 
You know what I mean? But I was like, wait a minute. I had to think about it for a second. I was like, what is McIntyre going to do, you know, uh, after this? Right? What are you going to have him do, you know, for the next couple weeks before he gets to Bobby Lashley and we get the rematch at WrestleMania? So I was like, all right, they're going to give us the feud again. The match is going to continue. The feud is going to continue until they put McIntyre up to face Lashley. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. So uh, basically, this was an ODQ match. This was great. This was great. Was this as good as what they did last week? Eh, I think last week was a little bit better. But these two have fantastic chemistry with one another. They're hard hitting, you know. And you know, whenever you get Max and Sheamus in the ring, you know it's going to be something great, right? Uh, so these two hit each other with everything. Didn't hold anything back. So there was there was big spot after big spot, you know. But uh, the the end of the match, I, I love this one. So basically, these two both grabbed steel ring steps and came flying at one another. And the force knocked McIntyre, you know, even though he kind of sold it, oversold it. He went flying over the barricade into uh, where the Thunderdome screens were while Sheamus was left on the floor. And basically, the match was called off, ending in a draw as medical assistance had the, you know, uh, medical assistance was required for both competitors. My only thing I'm going to complain about here is that this isn't, if you're going to do the match again at Fastlane, which I probably, I think that's most likely what we're going to see, right? It's a B-level, C-level pay-per-view that no one gives a crap about. So I think they're going to put Sheamus versus McIntyre on that pay-per-view one more time. And it's most likely going to be whoever wins will be the number one contender for the WWE Championship at uh, at WrestleMania. And I have no problem with that. My thing is, is just that WWE just becomes too reliable too re- or too reliant on these types of matches. That's my only thing. They're too reliant on this kind of type of stuff. You know, McIntyre Sheamus, bring the house down. Let's do the match again next week. Right? I just hope that you don't give us Mac Type versus Sheamus part three next week. Do the match one more time at Fastlane since clearly you're gonna need matches for that show. Cause that card looks awful right now, if we're being honest, outside of Roman versus Daniel Bryan, right? And you know, have that be the number one contender because who I, there's nobody, nobody lined up to face uh Lassie right now. I don't even think that Lassie should be defending his title at Fastlane. There's nobody lined up for him, you know. Maybe I, like unless you plan to have him do some kind of open challenge. There's he doesn't have a number one contender, yeah. So I I wouldn't do, you know I wouldn't do the match. I w- I wouldn't have Lashley defend the title if he doesn't necessarily need to. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll see what happens uh, w- on that front. But you know this was great between McIntyre and Sheamus. I just hate that when they just becomes too reliant on this type of stuff. Because, like, they see something, they see a great match, and they decide to do it again and again and again, and they just ram it down your throat to the point that you don't care. So next up, we had Shea McMahon uh, issuing an apology to Braun Strowman. This was bad. This made absolutely no sense. This is not interesting. I'm not invested into it. Whoever's idea it was for this to be the storyline for Braun Strowman at Mania should be fired. Honestly, this is awful. This is horrendous. Horrendous. Who the hell is interested in this? So tell me. I really want to know. Who actually booked this and then thought it was actually interesting? I want to know actually if it was Shane himself. Because this is this is like ridiculous right now. They're doing a storyline centered around Shane McMahon thinking Braun Strowman is stupid. That's the, that's that's the gist of the storyline, right? So, basically, Braun Strowman came out and he wasn't happy. He demanded an apology for Shane McMahon after Shane basically embarrassed him last week by having him tag in Adam Pearce when Strowman by himself had won the Raw Tag Team Championships. So, 
Uh, Strowman suggested that McMahon was laughing at him, but he said that can't be the, the case because Shane should know that Braun could snap him like a twig at any moment, right? But the thing about it is, uh, uh, Strowman said that he didn't want to, uh, he didn't want to put his hands on Shane McMahon, right? He didn't want to put his hands on Shane McMahon because he knew that Shane could fire him at any moment. So he didn't want to cause trouble in that regard. So, uh, so after uh, that, he just said he just wanted respect and for Shane to give it to him. So Shane came out. Shane did his entrance really slowly. He walked around the ring. He got into the. He, then he finally got into the ring. He walked right up to Strowman, and then tried sizing him up. But you can't do that on Strowman. So then he's like, I apologize. So then you thought, that's it. That was anticlimactic. So then Shane McMahon leaves the ring, but then he keeps looking back like there's something else he wants to say. Strowman's like, do you have something else you want to say? Like, then, you know, then say it. Like, what, like, what the what the fuck are you doing here? You know what I mean? So uh, afterwards, Strowman is uh, like, whatever. And then Adam Pierce said, or uh, Adam Pierce meets with uh, Shane McMahon backstage and says, "Is there something else you wanted to say to sh- you know uh, Strowman?" And uh, Strowman was like, "Or not, or not Strowman." Shane was like, "Yes," and he asked Adam Pierce to tell Strowman that he wanted to meet uh, with him in the ring again. So then we spend, and I'm not gonna go into detail with this segment because I don't care. It's stupid. They have Strowman come out to the ring. Shane McMahon comes out to the ring just to get out of the ring, right? He starts acting like the microphone's not working and he needs his microphone changed, right? Then he just starts saying, oh, I don't want to play games with you, Strowman. You know, I'm a guy that likes to have fun and you know, all this, but, you know, I don't want there to be any animosity between us. So then he basically just starts, you know, he's basically making fun of Strowman, you know, uh, it, this was so dumb. He just starts talking about uh, all these like these quotes that talk about big men and how dumb they are, right? And I'm just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Honestly, this was so bad. You know, Shane's basically saying never would I ever explicitly call you stupid, right? But he was insinuating that he was calling him stupid the entire time. Eventually, you know, Strowman, you know, went after Shane because he had enough. Strowman's saying, oh, you're trying to embarrass me on live TV. This entire show is embarrassing, Strowman. So I don't blame you, even though you don't add anything to the show. All right, you're not the only thing that's stupid on this program. So uh, Strowman took off chasing after Shane McMahon, but failing to catch him. You know, before Shane got into an SUV and sped off. So uh, then, uh, you know, Strowman was like, oh, and uh, Strowman left. But then seconds later, Shane McMahon is back in the arena and he waves at Strowman, who's not looking at him. And Shane's like, yeah, so stupid. So clearly this is going to lead to a match between these two at WrestleMania at some point. Right. And who cares? <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves here. Who gives a fuck? I'm not interested in the storyline. I'm not interested in the match. I don't want to see it. I know you guys don't want to see it either. Either The fact that they wasted like 20 minutes of our times with this, it's just like, why? Do they have, do they really have nothing else? Nothing else for either two of these men. I don't even care for Shane McMahon to begin with. Strowman, the only reason why I, I have to give a shit is because he's a full-time talent. But the fact that this is the story that they're trying to tell, man, this shows how bad these writers are, how much, how bad Vince needs to go. Because this is not a WrestleMania storyline. It's not deserving of it. it. It has no credence whatsoever. This is legit a shit break if we see the match of Mania. That's what it is, right? First off, before the last night, I was confused on who was the baby face and who was the heel here, right? It was just last night that I was actually able to figure out this thing, you know, Shane's the heel and Strowman's the baby face. This shit is so dumb. It's so bad, man. And like, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not looking forward to this at WrestleMania. Really, I'm not. 
Man, I'm looking at it. We've already been recording for 30 minutes. I'm already almost done with the review. That's that's how meaningless this show felt. This is not WrestleMania season. And I, I, I don't want to hear it from anybody, man. This show was so bad. Anyway, we had Xavier Woods versus Shelton Benjamin here. The only good thing that I actually really enjoyed here, well... Well, um, the match here w- was was pretty decent, right? It's it's whatever, you know. Next week it was announced. I already talked about this. Next week the New Day versus the Hurt Business for the Raw Tag Team Championships, right? So I don't know, you know, uh, if the if the New Day will win this match or not. I could I wouldn't be surprised, right? Wouldn't be surprised. What would this be like? Their ninth title reign, you know. So you know how Vince wants to make the New Day the best tag team ever, so. I don't know. Wouldn't be surprised. We'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, uh, anyway, the other thing here, the New Day and, uh, Xavier and Kofi, they had these, uh, Mortal Kombat, uh, ring gear, you know. This was, you know, in homage to Scorpion and Sub Zero. If you guys play Mortal Kombat, I know you guys are probably marking out. So this was those those I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie those are ring attires tonight you know that ring gear that had they had that was fire that was fire the new day always bringing out the heat no matter if it's from their Super Saiyan attires from WrestleMania 32 no matter if it's uh the uh what was it the Gears of War one they had a Survivor Series a couple months ago right they've had so many great ring gears over the years and this one was just as good this was fire. Uh, I, I love the way, though, the, the, Kofi's HUD, you know how Kofi has the dreads, right? Uh, you know, he has the blonde dreads with the, the HUD. It, 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 it matched so well. Like, it, it looked fine on Xavier, too, but I love the way Kofi looked here. But, uh, getting to the match, the match was anything special. It is what it is. Uh... Xavier, uh, rolled up Benjamin, and that's how he, he got the win. So... Will Xavier win, or not Xavier, will the New Day win the tag titles next week? Like I said, I don't know. I'm going to go with the Hurt Business just because the New Day got the win tonight. I could definitely see a rematch taking place at Fastlane, maybe even Mania, even though I have no interest in it. It's just, what else are you going to do? You have legit no other tag teams, and this is what you get when your tag team division is dead. The rehashing of old feuds, old tag team title matches, Stuff that we just saw two, three months ago. It's sad, but this is Monday Night Raw. So next up, we had, what was it? Well, we had Matt Riddle versus Slapjack, right? Matt Riddle, our U.S. champion. I love Matt Riddle, man. I wish he had something a little bit better going into WrestleMania season. But, you know, uh, at least he's, I guess, being booked decently, right? Even though every once in a while they have him get rolled up for no reason. Uh, he's been, I would say he's been booked decently for the most part. So... Uh, and so next week we actually have two uh, championship matches. We have... Uh, I, I think my camera's light is starting to die. But anyway, I gotta that means I gotta charge at the battery. But anyway, uh like I said, we had next week we have the New Day versus the Herb Business for the Raw Tag Team titles, and we also have uh Riddle defending the US title against uh, Mustafa Ali. And I, I expect that match to be an absolute banger. The only thing I just wish is Retribution was booked a little bit better. That's my only thing here. Retribution, they been made to look like a bunch of pawns, a bunch of nobodies. Like, they have absolutely no personality, no development, nothing of, you know, substance on this show. And it sucks for somebody as good as Stoff Ali, really. But, uh, anyway, you know, uh, they get this set up for next week. They had Riddle battle uh, Slapjack, right? And Riddle controlled the match for the most part. Slapjack got off a couple of moves, but Riddle fought back. He delivered the bro knee and then the bro Derek for the win. And that was about it. You know, it wasn't a bad match. It wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It was whatever. But next week, I think Riddle and Ali could steal the show. Honestly, if it was up to me, I would have Riddle and Ali start the show next week. Do something different. You guys hear me all the time complain how on SmackDown, right, Roman Reigns uh, starts the show every single week. And it's the same old, same old. Excuse me. Now, right now, you know, here you have, uh, 
Here you have, uh, you know, on Monday Night Raw, most weeks it's McIntyre or Lashley, right? I would do something different. Give us Riddle versus Ali. Let them give us a nice little 20, 25-minute match to start the show. Take, have that take up the first uh, 30 minutes. Start up the show with something different, right? Matt Riddle, show him why he's one of your most prominent stars, why he's the U.S. champion. I know Riddle and uh, Ali can absolutely give you a classic, a classic U.S. title match if you give them the time next week. So if it was up to me, that's what I would start the show with. You know, switch it up. Switch it up, man. We're on the road to WrestleMania. Give us something to be excited about, right? And speaking about Matt Riddle and the U.S. Championship and who he defends to get at WrestleMania, right now, I'm going to go with AJ Styles. We never really got that match that we, we were supposed to get with Styles and Riddle on SmackDown. We got a couple, like, TV show matches when Riddle first debuted. And it's already kind of crazy to think about how Riddle's been on the main roster now for a year. But uh, I think it would be perfect they would be perfect to have Matt Riddle uh, versus AJ Styles in a 20, 25-minute match at WrestleMania. They can easily give us the match that we should have got last year at SummerSlam, if you ask me. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Because right now, I know that Styles has absolutely nothing going on right now. And he has no direction really for WrestleMania, which is sad because it's AJ Styles. But uh, that's what I would do. Styles versus Riddle for the U.S. title. Uh... We had the uh, women's tag team championship match. Naomi and Lana versus Nia Jax and Baszler. Before the match, uh, before the match, Baszler and Jax came out and they let us know that they had Reginald, right? Reginald. Uh, Jax said that, you know, Reginald was cute and was their new friend and would also be, uh, uh, you know, Helping them out with his support at ringside. So, I don't care about this. I like Reginald. But the second you put this guy with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler is the second that I don't give a shit about the guy anymore. It's that simple. I will actually give Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler a little bit of credit. The only time I will actually give Nia Jax any credit for anything. The reason why I'm going to give them credit is uh, they actually look like decent tag team champions. I know that NXT is most likely unveiling their own set of tag team titles, which is a absolute horrific move. I don't know why the fuck you would do that. Like, why? The The point of the normal women's tag team championships is that you have those titles defended on any brand. It kind of takes away the point if you don't allow the tag team champions to be able to go to NXT just because NXT has their own set of belts. Plus, NXT's women's division isn't that massive. So what the hell are you doing? Doesn't really make sense from any perspective. But anyway, you know, that's what WWE wants to do. That's whatever. Whatever. We'll, we'll see how it goes, right? I, I trust Triple H in NXT. And hopefully he'll actually make those titles important and relevant. But uh, Jackson Baszler, they have defended those tag team titles almost every week for like the last month. They defended them at... Uh, at the Elimination Chamber. They defended them on on Raw. I, I forget against who, but I know they did. They just defended them last week against Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. And now this week, they're defending them against uh, Lon and Naomi. They're defending them against Sasha and, ba or Sasha and Bianca at uh, Fastlane in two weeks. So at least, you know, they're looking like credible, dominant champions. You can't, you can't, I can't sit here, as much as, as much as I hate Nia Jax, I can't sit here and not say the truth. I wouldn't be doing my job, you know. But either way, man, uh, the match sucked. It's Lana. It's like, she sucks. I feel bad for Naomi that she's not in the Raw, you know, title pitcher. But the match wasn't good. Anything like that. Uh, at the end of the match, right? Reginald distracted uh, Lana. Lana, I think Lana was going, was running the ropes and like Reginald uh, grabbed her leg, right? Then uh, Jax did a powerbomb on Lana for the win. One, two, three. Jax hoisted Reginald over his shoulder and carried him up the ramp. And that was it. So, who cares? This is stupid. Right? But speaking of the women's division, we got to talk about the Raw Women's Championship really quickly. If you guys didn't uh, 
They, so they did a quick backstage segment with Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, and they were talking about how they want to be in the Raw Women's Championship picture going to WrestleMania, and how they are just as ambitious as Charlotte, you know, is. Even though everyone knows it's going to be Charlotte versus Asuka anyway, right? And uh, basically, Charlotte came over and said, huh, you know, I want to, I want that spot at WrestleMania, and I know I deserve it. You know, and I'm just like, Charlotte, shut up, man. I'm tired of the sympathy act. But Charlotte said that over the next couple of weeks, I want to see everybody in that division pick it up, and I want to see if anybody else plans to stop me on my road to WrestleMania, all right? And a lot of talk is going around about, what's her name? Uh... Peyton Royce's promo. Peyton Royce cut a really good promo, right? And you could tell she was very passionate, but she could, she was frustrated. She talked about how, and you, I know with Raw talking, talking smack, the superstars are allowed to be much more or vocal. They're less scripted. They can be, they can actually put elements of their real life self into it. And that's when wrestling is at its best, in my opinion, right? When you get those real life elements, like, you know, with John Cena and The Rock, for example, you know? There was so much real life beef that went into that TV beef, you know. So Pam Royce talked about how she moved from England to chase his career and how she believes that she's better than the 98 percent of the people in the locker room. Right. And that the two percent and you could tell who she was talking about when she meant the two percent talking about Sasha Banks and Oscar. Right. The Bailey's the Becky Lynch's, you know. She was talking about how she felt, you know, that she could give those people a run for her money. I remember, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months ago when, uh, or this, no, this was last year. What am I saying? Sasha and uh, Peyton Royce did have some, they have they had some good chemistry during a couple tag team matches. Wasn't it, you know, the best thing in the world, but it was something that made me want to, you know, at least see a match between those two, a singles match, you know, because I feel if you watch the Peyton Royce from NXT, right? You know, the Pam Royce from NXT is actually pretty decent. She was actually pretty decent. Watched some of her matches with Ruby Ride and Oscar from back then. She's not bad, you know? It's just that she's very scripted on the main roster, just like everybody else, you know? There's a lot of talent on the main roster in the women's division. Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose, right? Talented superstars. I'm not going to put Dana Brooke on that list, right? She, Dana Brooke has never really proved to me that, you know, she's actually decent. You know, Dana Brooke, I've always seen her as the same person. She's never done anything special to me. But Peyton Royce, she's not terrible in the ring, right? Liv Morgan, Ruby Ride. These are names I've been saying for years that have been, you know, that have not been used correctly in, in the eyes of WWE. And I feel like WWE could do so much better with these superstars. So much better. And uh, the big thing here for me is, you know... I, it's not, I don't want to see Peyton Royce as Raw Women's Champion. I'm not saying that at all. Remember, when Naomi said this type of stuff last year and how everybody was saying Naomi deserves better, right? The, the, the company didn't, did nothing. They ignored her, you know? So I don't expect Peyton Royce to be treated any better, right? All I'm going to say is this, and you guys can see how dark it's getting in here because my light's dying on my camera, so I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty quickly. Man, they're, they're trying to make me look like a burnt piece of toast. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to say is what they should do is instead of just giving the match over to Charlotte, why not do a tournament? Peyton Royce is talking about, let me show what I can do. Peyton Royce, you believe that you're better than 98% of the company? Prove it. Prove it. Let's do an actual tournament. And that's the tournament to determine who's going to be the one to face Asuka at WrestleMania. Sasha has her opponent. It's going to be Bianca, right? Let's find out who's going to face Asuka. Do a tournament. Have it be Baszler, Jax, Naomi, Lana, uh, Royce, uh, Rhea Ripley when she gets there. Because they showed in their Rhea Ripley video package tonight. Charlotte. And you can add, I think, one more name. And then, uh, I don't know, anybody, anybody. I don't, I don't really care. You know, I know I'm probably forgetting somebody in that division. But uh, have one more name and have that person be the one to face Asuka at Mania, right? Do the tournament. It's most likely going to be Charlotte anyway, right? Because why wouldn't it be? But at least give these superstars a chance to show how good they actually are. 
You know, you need time to fill on these shows anyway. You struggle to fill in three hours. You do like two or three uh, tournament matches a night. You know, right? Give these matches about 15 to 20 minutes. Then you can actually fill in the show. It actually makes sense. Right? Then we'll actually be invested. We want to see, all right, who's going to face Oscar at Mania. And then I would have the finals end up being, you know, Naomi versus Charlotte or Naomi versus or Rhea Ripley, something like that. Right? And then the winner faces a Charlotte at Mania. Or not, or Oscar at Mania. I keep messing up my words, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So that's what I would do personally. That's what I would do. You know, will they be do it? No, because nothing special in this company anymore. But that's what I would do. Give these women a chance to show how good they actually are. It would actually give us something to actually care about because I haven't cared about the Raw Women's Championship since Oscar defended it against Sasha Banks last summer, back in August. I'm sorry, that's sad. I don't care what anybody says. That is sad. So you want to make the Raw Women's Division look important? Do that. Do that. Do a tournament to determine who will face Asuka at Mania. Last but not least, this show ended with AJ Styles. AJ, uh, AJ and Rainey had a segment early in the show where AJ mocked Orton's issues with Alexa Bliss, right? Especially, you know, uh, the curse that Orton has, which has with coffee or black ooze, and then that would lead to our beta vet. So, this was this was not good. This was just eh. Styles and Orton have had way better matches. Like I think of their match at WrestleMania a couple years ago. This was just whatever, right? They, you know, these two were clearly not going at a full speed ahead. You know, Alexa Bliss sh- showed up on the screen and she uh, started doing Jack in the Box and taunting Radio Orton like she's been doing the last couple months, and basically all of a sudden. Uh, she lit a match igniting the flames from the ring post, and then it caused Orton to vomit the uh, the black ooze again. All right, so uh, the, we've seen this so many times now. All right, we've seen it with Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre in the uh, what was it, the Gauntlet match? Like enough's enough. I love Alexa Bliss. I love this new character, but it's it's got repetitive. This is the problem with WWE. They make everything repetitive. They do it over and over again. Like the Fiend, they've been doing this weekly since the Fiend was off television way back in what was it? Uh way back in uh uh TLC back in December. Back in December. Here we are now in March. It's been three months since that pay-per-view, and you're still doing the same shit. Come on. Like, you can't expect us to sit here. And I know they're just doing this to drag it out because The Fiend is going to be returning, most likely to face Randy Orton at WrestleMania. It's just like, did we really have to drag this out for the last three months with Randy Orton and, the, and Alexa doing the same thing every week? Alexa interferes in every single Randy Orton match. Right? At first, it was entertaining because they were finding unique ways to do it. Now, it's just, you know, clearly we know that Orton's, you know, eating one of those black blood capsules, right? Those fake blood capsules, just, you know, painted black. So, it makes him feel like, you know, like uh, he's at, he has that in his system. It's just like, I'm sick of it. I'm over it. It's not that I hate Alexa. I don't. You guys know I really like her character. It's just, I'm over it. I, I've seen it enough. Styles won the match while Randy Orton was distracted by hitting him with a phenomenal forearm. Like I said, Styles needs to face Riddle for the U.S. title at Mania. That's needs to, that needs to be his plan. But other than that, guys, man, this was not a good way to end the show. I, it's time for The Fiend to come back. Honestly, I'm, I'm, you can't keep doing this unless you have some other unique way to keep pushing this out. I, I, I'm, I'm over at this point. I'm over this show at this point. I'm over this WrestleMania bill, man. We have four weeks to go, and I, we still have no idea what to expect. It's sad. This was not a good show tonight. Not a good show. I don't want to. Don't listen to anything anybody tells you. If they try to tell you this was a great show because of McIntyre and Sheamus and Bobby Lashley looking dominant as a WWE champion, right? No, this show was garbage. This is not a WrestleMania build. And they need to get their heads out their asses. They got four weeks left, right? You have four weeks to fix this. I don't know if you can, 
But, you know, we'll see. But this show was not good. The Braun Strowman shaping man shit made no sense. Uh, the Ray New York and Alexa Bliss stuff is repetitive. Can, like, can we actually get creative, please? Could, like, come on. But other than that, guys, my camera's completely dark now. So I need to, clearly I need to get out of here. Uh, but other than that, guys, this is all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like in that video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'll see you guys later, man. Check out the SmackDown review if you guys haven't already. I'll be back here later this week covering more WWE news on the road to WrestleMania. Thank you guys for the love and support. I'll see you guys later. Stay safe and healthy, y'all. Peace.